Hello again, I am Blunty, and this generic looking 8 inch tablet is the W4S from a company I've never heard of called Pippo. Its 8 inch display is an uninspiring 1280 by 800 affair. Under the hood, it's simmering along on a quad core 1.83 GHz Intel Atom Z3735F chip, a pretty common CPU for low end Windows 8 tablets, and you'll even find it on some budget priced laptops. It's got 64 GB of storage, most of which belongs to the Windows partition, because this little bugger can also dual boot out to Android install. And to be honest with you, I haven't even booted up Android on this thing because well, I was really only interested in fiddling around with the Windows install. What makes it slightly more interesting than most tablets at this price point, which is, by the way, just $130, is that it's got 2 gigabytes of RAM, which is twice that of many of its peers. Aside from that, it's got the usual stuff, a couple of crappy cameras, a micro SD card slot, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, headphone jack, it's even got an HDMI output. And it runs Windows 8.1 surprisingly well, actually. Smooth, fairly responsive, even the touchscreen is well behaved, even on desktop mode. But as the title of this video gives away, this isn't a review of the W4S. Well, there's not much to review. I think I pretty much just covered it, really. It's a dirt cheap Windows 8.1 tablet with a side order of Android, and frankly, it's not too bad value for money for such a cheap little beastie. But for the sake of shits and giggles, I wanted to see how well this $130 worth of Windows computer would run games. And what it did next surprised me. <laughs> Under Minecraft, even with a 64x64 resource pack, four times the texture resolution of default Minecraft, it hung in there at a pretty damn playable frame rate. Of course, this is with the Optifine mod installed, a mod specifically designed to optimize performance and give you a huge list of graphical and processing options to dig into and switch off to fine tune the game performance. And as you'd imagine, most of the pretty stuff had to be turned off here. Duh. In most situations, the frame rate hovered close to 30 frames per second. Perfectly acceptable and playable for this type of game. However, go anywhere where a large number of entities is being rendered, like villages and farms in particular, and things bog down instantly to, well, let's call it less than ideal. <laughs> but still, stay away from pens of animals, and it's an impressively usable machine for having a bit of fun poking around in Minecraft. Well then, how about now something with a bit more fidelity? Sirius Sam 3 BFE. Sure, it's not the latest shooter out there, but I'm trying to be realistic here. This is a $130 Atom-based 8-inch tablet after all, so I figure a shooter from 2011 would be a reasonable but not impossible challenge. And well, just, I mean, look at it. More surprises from this ridiculous little tablet, as it churns away at Sirius Sam 3 at frame rates pretty close to being nicely playable, sitting in the mid to high 20s. Sure, it dips into the teens once in a while, but mostly it hangs around at 25 to 30-ish. And while of course not perfect for a fast twitch shooter like Sam here, it is what I'd call playable, if you're desperate and this machine is all you've got. And so, with the surprisingly competent performance pushing Sirius Sam 3 around, next up I'd figured I'd kick the Peepo's ass a bit. So I installed 2013's Tomb Raider. A game which I'm still seeing very commonly used as a benchmark point for gaming rigs. And yeah, it kicks the living hell out of this little Atom CPU. Benchmarking with, of course, all of the settings turned way down, it still came in coughing and wheezing at an average of 9.9 .9 frames per second. And in-game, well, it should come as little shock that playable isn't among the words I'd use to describe it. <laughs> it's about now that I should also mention that the W4S from Pippo gets hot under a gaming load. And I mean hot. Like... Use it in a tablet stand because holding it would be uncomfortable and a little bit scary, kind of hot. But, to be fair, it was never intended to be doing this kind of stuff anyway. It's supposed to be for light stuff, email and web browsing and a bit of YouTube watching and stuff. You know, normal, cheap tablet things. But yeah, all that said, light gaming is absolutely a thing you can do. Perhaps not perfectly ideal for a 2001 era shooters like Serious Sam, but you can get away with it if you need to. And for a spot of Minecraft with a little care to set it up and optimize it properly, sure, absolutely. And pretty much anything less intense than that will do just fine. Like this visual novel thing I bought on Impulse in the Steam sales, because, well, I thought, why the hell not? I'd never tried one of these things before, and this one is rated well, and it's dirt cheap, and it doesn't seem as creepy as the dating sim-style visual novel type games usually do. Anyway, point is, it ran just fine, as I expect will a great number of similarly inexpensive and non-system demanding games. 
And just in case you're curious, I did run 3D Mark on it too. Again, more for shits and giggles than laboring under the delusion of expectations. And yeah, as you may have guessed, Ice Storm went okay. Ice Storm Extreme was about as far as I could go. After that, the frame rate started to, um, well, they started to implode a bit. <laughs> but as far as my very first experience with a Windows 8.1 tablet goes, even this almost comically cheap effort, it's surprisingly pleasant. <laughs> to be honest with you, I was expecting a much worse experience. But, you know, I'm always prepared to be surprised, and pleasantly surprised is even better. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty. Hope this has been interesting, if not informative, and I will catch you next time.